Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and today we are looking at something different than the normal uh, material on our channel. We are looking at a 3D printer. All right, full disclosure, about three, four years ago, I started to look into 3D printing and uh, bought a, you know, a decent little 3D printer and started printing. And I was really impressed with the capabilities that were there but I was not impressed with the amount of work that I had to do on the printer. And it reached to the point where I was spending more time messing and, and dinking around with the printer than I was on just you know printing out something. And I, I just said, I don't got the time for this. And I kind of just got rid of it all and, and just stepped away because it was, it was far from click and print. <laughs> That's the way I'd put it. But I still kind of kept an eye on the on the printing scene, and then a couple new printers have come out that have been apparently very well received. And I thought perhaps maybe one of these is the the kind of printer experience that I want, which is basically set it up, print, hit click, print, and don't don't have to do anything else with it. You know, maybe occasionally have to clean something, but um, I, I am definitely not one of those guys that geeks out on like upgrading and and <laughs> swapping out hot ends and, and replacing extruders and whatever all that stuff is. I, I don't want to do any of that, right? Like, um, I just want the dang thing to print. And I'm wondering if this is the thing. So enter the Bamboo Labs P1S printer. Let's open it up and see what we get. What you get inside the box, it does look very well packaged. Um, I mean, lots of styrofoam protecting the corners, plastic everywhere. From what I understand, this thing is 99% set up, and you just have to do some minor adjustments. We'll see if that's true. Okay, so it looks like what I get in the box is uh, three different little spools of filament, different colors, probably something for you to play around with. And then the main unit itself, which does seem to be pretty well assembled under all this plastic, so we'll get into it and find out. And again, you can see this is really well assembled. Um, everything on it is, is well packaged. You, you, you got plastic on all the doors, um, which is honestly a little bit kind of difficult to remove, to be honest. I, I'm loath to uh, just cut. I was hoping I could just carefully remove it, and there we go. But um, yeah, that's that's very impressive. Okay, um, I will say it is not as um, easy <laughs> to assemble as I thought. I mean, it is mostly assembled. However, there's some work that you have to do in order to get this <laughs> all pulled out and, and finally set up. One of the things you have to do is you have to take out two screws here so that you can lift this out of um, the printer manifold. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And another one over here. us to pull this up and out maybe there we go ta-da next there are four screws here that need to be removed so that we can lift this out i will say at least they have included these helpful little stickers which makes it pretty easy to figure out which screws you're supposed to remove Remove this cardboard. Okay, we're making good progress. We got the kind of the innards mostly cleared out. Got some foam in there that we're going to have to work on. I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, now we're going to set what they call the AMS assembly up here. So that's the next step. Turned it around so you can see the back of the unit. And the next step is to take this um, 
filament guide, I think is what the, they call it. I could be wrong on that. Um, and it's going to feed into here. Okay, I think I just fed that in until it kind of clicks. I didn't hear it click, but essentially it goes in there so that uh, uh, it will guide the filament through there. And then we're going to take this cable here and we're going to connect the AMS assembly. Everything is just so sticky to the unit itself. Six pin assembly. I believe that will stick it here. And this end of it will come down and attach here. Four pin assembly. And it is going to attach here. Next, we're going to take out this screw and this screw um, for the spool assembly holder. So we're going to use this hex wrench again. And you have the spool assembly that is going to go in it kind of in its place here um, with these two small screws. Okay, now we're back to the front of it again, and we have more screws that need to be removed. There's three in here, again, also marked by those sti handy stickers, so we're going to take those out. All right, next is to take this cool looking remote. And we're going to attach what, this cable to it. Let me see if I can bring this in a little closer. There we go. That's the cable. We're going to attach it to this. Um, I guess I would call it a remote, but it's not really a remote if it's got to stay connected, is it? I do wonder if this was not something that could have already been, you know, for the most part, attached and assembled, but... Perhaps there's things I'm not aware of. Certainly is this possible. Okay, then that just kind of goes in and slides over so that it's secure. Point. <laughs> the manual says that the printer is ready to go. I'm a little concerned because there's still styrofoam in here um, that it hasn't kind of shown me how to get out and it's in there pretty good. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that, but I will try to figure out exactly how that comes out. At this point, I've got it kind of tucked in the corner. Uh, the manual says go ahead and plug it to power, even though there is the styrofoam in there. I'm a little concerned about that. Um, but they also give you the sh world's shortest cable. Like, I don't even think this is two feet. So small. Thankfully, it's just a standard PC cable, and I've got another one that's a good bit longer. I'm going to use that one. Powered it up. Before use, make sure you've read the user manual carefully. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Make sure you remove the screw and fix the hotbed. I did do that. I don't, I don't know what... Yes, okay. All right, then you set your region. North America. And then you get to scan a QR code to pull up the app. How cool is that? And now the app is installing. We'll see what it looks like. Then getting there, I got into adding a device. You connect via Bluetooth, and then it's asking to pair, which we're going to do now. Okay, it uh, is running a diagnostic right now. The big thing is it lifted up the bed, so I was able to remove the styrofoam, which was kind of the important part there. And um, now it'll, I'll let it run through the whole diagnostic, but I'm at least relieved that I was able to get that styrofoam out. I wish the manual would have said something like, you will not be able to remove the styrofoam until you do this powering on, but whatever. Check out this cool feature, by the way, while it's running through this test. Look at these lights just flashing across there. How cool is that? That's a neat touch. Next, we have to remove inside of here. There's two stickers that show you this 
little filter and you need to remove this desiccate is what's in there. So that comes out and there's one on each side. Okay, at this point, it looks like everything is pretty much ready to print. We just need to, I would assume, put in some, some filament and select a print. Yep, we're gonna load some filament. They included some with it and you can see here, here is the <laughs> taped, uh, taped end of the filament that we're gonna remove this from. And this is on there so good that we're gonna have to remove that. Install it, and at least I think I'm going to install it. So it just kind of sits in there, which seems pretty painless. And then you feed it into, and I will say this is already reminding me why I stepped away from 3D printing because <laughs> even just the simplest act of loading the filament into the printer is giving me headaches already. Right? It's saying load it into the printer, uh, which I did. I fed it through, it, it came alive and fed some through. And now the app is saying like it's not loaded, but it, it, it's saying it needs to load it. And I don't know what I'm doing. So again, I, you know, it should be that simple. Like you, you stick it in, it loads it, good to go. Well, apparently not. Now I gotta figure out what this means by load the filament when it's clearly loaded. I think I've successfully solved the loading problem. It looks like it's doing something now. Okay, this is, um, I don't know, two days later, a few hours, several hours later anyway, and I'm going to give you a, a quick update of my impressions. All right, so the first eight plus hours with the Bamboo P1S was uh, just extremely painful. <laughs> I was so frustrated. I could not get it to print, um, would not load the filament from the AMS, and uh, turns out, uh, I was, <laughs> I was trying to be a little too complicated, uh, for it. Uh, so I, I was trying to use the MS to print and I thought, okay, well, I'll just keep things really, really simple. I'm just going to print the little files that are already included on the printer. I'm not going to try to mess around with the desktop app or anything like that. And I just wanted to get a, a simple benchmark out and it did not work. It never worked. I couldn't get anything to go. Um, eventually I took the AMS apart and, uh, well, uh, not apart, took it off of the printer and put in a spool on the back and printed a little benchy. And, um, I was like, man, that's kind of crappy. Really? Let me show you this. Here's the benchy. Um, lots of problems with it really compared to most 3d prints There's like beading and things. Well, <clears throat> problem was, uh, I was using the support PLA. Um, instead of actual, you know, normal filament PLA. So I somehow I missed that that was support material. And of course it did not print very well with that. Um, but when I put in actual, um, PLA and printed it, it, it did a very nice smooth job to show you this. Um, hopefully it'll pick up the details. It's not a very complicated piece, very functional. It's a Makita tool holder. You just slide your tools into this and you can mount them on the wall. Two really big things that I learned, again, a total newbie here, rookie uh, 3D printer, is that do not use <laughs> the the print uh, the menu on the printer to print things. It, it's more than likely going to get you in trouble. Like you can't just go down to the files that are included on the printer and say print because it'll screw things up if you're trying to use the MS. But instead, use the desktop app. Um, the other thing is for loading filament use the desktop app to load the filament. You go to the AMS in the app, click on the spool you're loading, click load, and it seems to just work, thankfully. Try to do it through the printer interface. I don't know why. Screws everything up. It doesn't work. All right, so we just completed a print this morning, and you can see 
if I take this out, a couple of cool hinges that I can use to build a cabinet with. One of the really cool things about the P1S is this um, PEI plate for your, your prints. It's magnetic, so you can just literally slide it in there. It adheres great. You close the gate, good to go. Okay, so again, I think my impressions on the P1S are going to be continuous and ongoing. I've only had it for a few days. I've done a few small prints. Can't say, um, you know, just can't put a definitive grade on it. I will say that once I got past the initial frustrations, it has worked really well. Things I like about it, the enclosed bed is great for keeping the temperature constant. I think the prints seem to be a little more consistent and reliable. The, the magnetic build plate that you can just take off and let your prints cool down and then pop them off, that's very helpful. The AMS, <laughs> once I figured out the loading issues, definitely very helpful. A um, lot of po initial positives. The real question is going to be reliability going forward and um, just me getting more familiar with the with the printer. So definitely not gonna give a final grade today. I will say the, there was some huge frustrations initially and honestly, <clears throat> that wasn't well covered by the manuals or the support materials. I had to go through um, the, a Facebook group for the P1S, a lot of good helpful people out there that, that pointed me in the right direction. Um, but it you know just wasn't clear that, hey, just trying to print straight off of the printer um, which ordinarily would be the simplest and cleanest thing to do actually causes problems because it doesn't know to engage the AMS and feed the filament that you've loaded there. It tries to just run from the main spool, which is not connected. So actually it was kind of one of those situations where by trying to be simple, I made it more complicated. That's probably not the first time that's happened.